So the multi-system preeclampsia, what is it? Why are we so much concerned? It is a multi-system disorder. It involves kidney, it involves heart, it involves liver. So because of this, it is a multi-system disorder. A multidisciplinary team have to treat this uh, disease. Occurring after 20th week of pregnancy with a variable features of severity and rate of progress occurs in 2 to 3 percent of all pregnancies, increases in morbidity and mortality for both mother and child. Even mother also is at risk and even the child is also at risk because of the, the growth retarded fetus may be there. Sometimes they may get into uh, fetal distress. So we will have to take out a premature baby or they may be uh, something like IUD, indirect and death of the fetus also we often see if it is not controlled properly. Okay. Now, moving to the next superimposed preeclampsia, the new onset of proteinuria after 20 weeks. Usually she will be very healthy. Suddenly she will show because the urine examination routinely we do every two months to see that her kidneys are functioning normally, a normal pregnant lady also. And urinary tract infection is very common in pregnant women. So we keep seeing the urine uh, routinely. In that, if you start seeing proteinuria after 20th week, that is after five months of pregnancy, then you have to uh, suspect that she may be having hypertension uh, from the beginning or it may be pregnancy-induced hypertension. Okay. The risk factors are maybe maternal or paternal. And then the maternal causes are genetic predisposition, the extremes of age. Usually this pH is common in very young primates like who are teenagers, like married, like 16, 17, 18 or in a higher age group, 35 plus. It's uh, in all this population, it is very common. There can be a genetic uh, predisposition. Sometimes it runs in the families. It can be in early parity. The first pregnancies are usually more common for PAH. Prior family history of preeclampsia, and women born small for gestational, if at all, the pregnant lady who is there, she might have been a IUGR baby, growth retarded baby. She is more prone for PHC. So how interesting it is. And all these are risk factors from the maternal side. And in these women, like the chronic hypertension, diabetes mellitus, chronic renal disease, even these conditions are more prone for PAH, pregnancy induced hypertension. So the maternal causes are multiple. Again, if there is a twin pregnancy, they are more prone for PAH and hydratiform mold. That is gestational trophoblastic disease. Last class, I only had taken you about gestational GTD. They are always with PAH, pregnancy induced hypertension, fetal structural anomalies and IU, IVF babies. There and all it is sometimes the PAH is very common. So in the examination, which pregnancies you guess for the onset of PAHs? Pregnancies which has happened as twin pregnancies, extreme age group of pregnancies, and also pregnancies where there is a hydratiform mole history was there and who have conceived by IVF. These are some of the salient uh, names you should remember. Okay. Paternal causes are also there for PAH, even though it is not much highlighted. It may be the partner who fathered a preeclamptic mother previously. He is uh, the first wife if she had PH, even the second wife also may develop if there is a paternal factor because of the chromosome. Barrier contraception, donor insemination that is again IVF. All these things are one of the one or two reasons contributed by the father paternal genes also. So the etiology, precise etiology is still unknown. That is, it is a disease of theories. Lot of theories have been uh, spoken. There are a lot of debates since our student days of 85 or 86 to now. There are a lot of debates on PAH still. There are many theories, theories, vascular theory, toxic theory, or it may be a immunological theory. So many theories are there to understand the preeclamptic toxemia. It can be a genetic predisposition in an autoimmune reaction against the placenta. The placenta itself may develop a autoimmune response and may lead to PAH. And uh, it is called as ancient Greeks a wandering womb, disease of the theories. So it is also funnily called as the wandering womb disease. <laughs> so the pathophysiology when it comes to this uh, uh, condition that is, that is PAH, it is very interesting. Deficient placental implantation and platelet aggregation within the placental bed. Deficient placental 
implantation, the, how the, the placenta gets implanted, whether it is in the lower part of the uterus or it is in the upper part of the uterus also, is important cause which has led to the PAH. That is again because of the vascularization and imperfect uh, placentation also, it is uh, happening. Placental ischemia and uh, release of vasoactive uh, substances, widespread endothelial damage and platelet adherence, and increased vascular permeability, all these, these are all like endothelial factors in the vessels. The vascular theory is the one which is causing all these problems, that much you have to remember. It is a, as I said, uh, there are many multiple reasons to develop PAH, even the genetic predisposition we said. Prostaglandin metabolism is also disordered. Prostaglandin is a hormone which is released because of the uh, pregnancy and it should be usually the, called as labor hormone. Because of the prostaglandin release, the lady sets into labor, delivery, pain. So prostaglandin metabolism also, there is a disorder, increase in thrombexane and decrease in prostacyclin concentration. These are all uh, the, uh, the coagulation factors which are increasing in the pregnant stage. They will increase by multiple times. Then it is going to lead to the PAH, leading to placental platelet dysfunction and further vasoconstriction of the blood vessels. Because of this, there is a hypercoagulability. The coagulation is hyper state. So the pregnancy itself is in a hypercoagulable state. Because of that, there are so much of uh, the thrombosis and uh, cerebrovascular accidents and uh, all these, uh, the cardiac problems, sometimes the cardiomyopathy can happen in some pregnant women because of the coagulation stages in a hyperactive stage in case of a pregnant lady because of the pregnancy hormone effects on the endothelial vessels. So coming to the systemic effects of preeclampsia in the maternal condition, what happens? There can be widespread vasoconstriction. The vessels will get constricted. Normal or increased systemic vascular resistance Left ventricular failure, this is on the large stages uh, actually can happen. Increased vascular permeability and edema, decreased circulating blood volume. These are all some of the systemic effects in case of a PH on the woman. And she can develop, she may develop most of the times so very frequent headaches and the visual disturbances, the blurred vision. When it is not in a mild stage, when it is increased to moderate to severe level, then she may come with suddenly like uh, the lady who is very normal. Uh, but uh, who has not checked up properly with the antenatal uh, checkups with a doctor. Sometimes in a remote village, they will not have any facilities. They may not go and have a checkup. Suddenly, they will come with uh, hyperreflexia, uh, cerebral hemorrhage, convulsions, visual disturbances, and headache. So headache and visual disturbance, blurring of the vision, these two things you should. And suddenly, she starts bloating. She puts on a lot of weight. This is also another thing like sometimes they will come to hospitals and tell, oh, our uh, pregnant uh, lady in the house, our bahu, or our uh, whoever it is, like uh, the daughter in the, the daughter is looking very fat these days after the pregnancy. She has put on weight too much. Like that, they will come, uh, actually, directly they will not know like what is the reason, the family attendants. So the renal involvement, if it is there, then can be reduced glomerular filtration rate. So the output may decrease. And reduced urea clearance, there can be high uric acid level and proteinuria, hyper, hypoproteinemia, total protein excretion may be more than 300 milligram per 24 hours, which is too high, and there can be oliguria. The urine secretions may be hampered. When it comes to the effects on the respiratory system, you know that she may develop pulmonary edema, facial and laryngeal edema. She will not be able to sit properly. She will be breathless all the time. And uh, adult respiratory distress syndrome, that is uh, RDS syndrome, these things, even in the COVID, you might have heard about RDS, like this, she made it up. Abnormal liver function tests are the one which will give us some clue regarding how much liver is involved. And subcapsular hemorrhage and epigastric pain and liver rupture also can happen sometimes if it is a too neglected case of PAH. Coming to the coagulation, which is a very important part, you people should remember there is a, some coagulation disorder which is going on in this PAH people. Increased turnover of fibrinogen, fibrin and platelets happens. So there can be thrombocytopenia, impaired platelet function. There can be disseminated intravascular coagulation, can be HELP syndrome. What is this HELP syndrome? The name is very attractive. HELP is not uh, like that what HELP like you will do to each other as friends or as uh, to your parents. It is hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes, 
low platelets all these things constitute what is called as help syndrome wherein kidney liver uh, the blood vessels all are involved and it's a very multi organ failure stage and very difficult to revive the patient once she enters this stage so it is the utmost duty of every obstetrician and medical personnel to see that the woman is diagnosed as early as possible whether she is into hypertension and she should be given the care so in the diagrammatic presentation you can see here that how the defective spiral artery remodeling is going on and uh, she cannot breathe and uh, she usually like blood um, the diseased placenta releases prolonged inflammatory uh, proteins into maternal blood so the inflammatory markers are released and systemic vasoconstriction and endothelial dysfunction will happen because of the the vascular tree is involved and there is hypertension and endorgan damage you know no hypertension and its effects usually the vessels are involved endorgan damage will be there and there can be hemolysis uh, elevated liver enzymes and low platelets all these things can happen and uh, this is how the pathophysiology of preeclampsia happens i just showed it in a diagrammatic presentation so that it will be easy for you people to follow so the what what will happen to the fetus in pah if it is neglected then there will be decreased placental perfusion placental ischemia and infarction iugr intrauterine growth retardation placental abruption suddenly the placenta will separate before her delivery date comes and she will start bleeding before the delivery very uh, emergency condition immediately we will have to take her into the high dependency unit where the blood blood products are available to save the mother and she can be into preterm labor also so the, in the severe eclampsia any of the following after 20th week of pregnancy like a severe hypertension to be 160 systolic 110 diastolic proteinuria more than 5 grams per 24 hours hardly any 400 ml of urine in 24 hours usually you should have at least 30 ml per hour isn't it as a normal urine secretion and there can be cerebral irritability epigastric and upper quadrant uh, pain that is because of the liver capsule is getting stretched because of the endorgan damage everything so these are these are all can happen in preeclamptic uh, taxemia but when she sets into eclampsia itself it is another bad stage where she will start throwing convulsions because central nervous system is involved here cerebral vasoconstriction and ischemia and there is vasogenic edema so one in 2000 deliveries in the industrial world is the world usually develop eclampsia from pah occurrence of convulsions in women with preeclampsia with no other attributable cause is the called as eclampsia so the incidence is uh, nearly 40% antepartum intrapartum 20% postpartum again 40% so nearly who were in pah severe pah they may develop this uh, eclampsia quite a in a big incidence that is 20 to 40% so controlling the women with uh, mild pregnancy induced hypertension is a very very uh, important duty of a clinician and uh, it is that uh, a task which is uh, should be attended by all obstetrician and gynecologist severe preeclamptic sir at higher, higher risk they have to be admitted and they have to be observed uh, we cannot send them to the home and ask them to come any time they may throw the convulsions okay so help syndrome as i said hemolysis elevated liver enzymes and low platelet count occur with severe preeclampsia hepatic ischemia with the peripotal hemorrhage and necrosis partial help only one or two criteria are present so any one of the variant can happen totally they may get into all these organs involved or only liver is involved partially and again uh, kidney will get involved afterwards so whatever the condition this is something like to be considered with as a emergency and uh, under the intensive care unit uh, help it should be treated so may occur when hypertension or proteinuria is absent 20% of the cases sometimes it can happen in postpartum also maybe asymptomatic sometimes they will be asymptomatic but suddenly they will collapse because of the multi organ failure may present with epigastric or hypochondrial pain malaise and uh, lot of uh, other ailments also so the differential diagnosis for help syndrome is acute fatty liver of pregnancy there is only the liver is fatty and it is not working because of that there can be liver failure that can be differential diagnosis for uh, help syndrome even though if a uh, clinician is following these patients regularly 
they will definitely make out whether it is uh, eclampsia or it is because of the other condition. But when they come as emergency, it is our duty to uh, place them in all these conditions as a differential diagnosis. Cholesteasis, where there is a bile duct uh, obstruction and a lot of uh, itching and high uh, levels of uh, the uh, liver enzymes is seen in this condition. And viral hepatitis, even in viral hepatitis, the same picture may come. And thrombocytopenia from other causes and early hemodialysis, uh, hemolysis can be detected by measuring serum hepatoglobin concentrations. So the acute fatty liver and viral hepatitis are to be considered very seriously. When suddenly, if there is an emergency, a patient of uh, preeclamptic toxemia or uh, eclamptic toxemia presents into, into your hospital. So it rapidly worsens. The prognosis of health syndrome is very bad. Within 24 to 48 hours, most of the time, they worsen a lot with a high morbidity and mortality. The results, but if it results, it results within six days to one week with a proper ICU care, increased maternal and fetal morbidity, increased risk of other complications of preeclampsia are the features of this health syndrome. 